Have you ever wondered who invented the menstrual cup? Well, we're not going to talk about who invented the cup today, but we are going to talk about the woman who really made it famous, Leona Watson Chalmers. This video started out as a short, but it was way too long, and so I'm kind of turning it into a long form video. So I hope you enjoy. You've never heard of her, but Leona Watson Chalmers has one of the most interesting life stories, small town girl to prima donna and Broadway star to mother and wife to tragic widow to minstrel cup pioneer, author and entrepreneur. She's had one crazy life. Born in 1883 in a small town in Kentucky, Leona Watson is a young girl with a beautiful singing voice. As she gets older and very confident in her talents, she has her eyes set on stardom and pawns the family piano for a mere $50 to fund a move to New York City. In an interview, she says, I thought the managers would be waiting for someone like me. They were not. Leona has to work hard and endure poverty conditions at first. Later, she lands work in a touring company and eventually gets her big break as the star of the climax. Several interviewers point out how ferociously determined Leona is about her work and asks, can't you rest? and she replies, it isn't my way, I can't stop here, which is kind of the theme for her life. She goes on to have several more roles in other plays, and for a brief moment, Leona Watson is a bona fide star and celebrity with features in magazines and newspapers around the country. In 1911, she marries a wealthy man, Charles Chalmers, the brother of the founder of Chalmers Motor Company, who also works for the automobile maker. She moves to Philadelphia with her husband and has just one daughter, also named Leona Watson Chalmers, in 1914. It's around this time she seemingly retires from the stage in lieu of being a wife and mother. In 1932, her husband Charles commits suicide after two unsuccessful attempts, the papers say he was brooding over losing his family fortune in the stock market. Leona is the one who finds him. Leona doesn't settle for a quiet life as a widow. She moves back to New York City alone at some point after her husband's death. By then, her daughter is a young adult. Then in 1935, at 52 years old, Leona files a patent for her rubber menstrual cup design. She names Tass Set. This is the start of a new chapter for Leona. She didn't invent the product, but her efforts promoting the product are what ultimately put her name in history books. Her inspiration is noted to be her time as a touring actress with a grueling schedule. In Golden Girl, her character wore bright white costumes, a nightmare if your period shows through. 1937 is a big year. She publishes her first book, Intimate Side of a Woman's Life, and begins advertising and selling her Tasset cup. In the book, she tackles multiple topics around reproductive health. Leona is a big fan of two things, douching and menstrual cups. Her book offers frank advice without euphemisms, and she feels strongly that women deserve frank information about their bodies. In 1943, she publishes her second book, Woman's Personal Hygiene. Tasset has to stop production due to wartime rubber shortages, which is perhaps one reason tampons won over users during the cup's absence. She never wavers and continues to advertise her cup on and off in the 40s and 50s alongside her first book, placing ads in magazines and newspapers across the country for this genius little device. She's a master of marketing and calls herself a doctor's wife to legitimize her expertise, a complete fabrication. At 75 years old, Leona sells her tacit assets and IP to a businessman, Robert Oreck. This is in 1958. She responds to his ad in the Wall Street Journal looking for an exciting business idea to buy. The tacit cup is the first period product to grace a Times Square billboard and is controversial even advertised on the radio, Leona Chalmers may or may not have lived to see her product featured in this way. Her last days are spent in Tudor City apartment in New York City, but her date of death has been impossible to track down. In 1955, her last known correspondence to a Broadway fan and friend reads, it's very kind of you to remember me, as so few others do, for my work in the theater. But since that phase of my life no longer offers any opportunities, I've had to put it aside for more remunerative activities. In another letter, she shares excitement over her third book, yet to be published, with a cheeky sign-off saying she's going to go back to her former name of Leona Watson, as the Chalmers name seems to have only brought her bad luck. Her brand lives on through Oryx Company, but the sales are low. He blames the low sales of Tasset on the reusability of the cup. Customers only need one cup for many years of use. He employs a nurse to help with a new design that is a one-time use and relaunches the menstrual cup as Toss Away. They even design a terrifying cup insertion device that's never produced. He sinks millions into making this product successful and hires the famous J. Walter Thompson ad agency in LA. Despite mass distribution in the US and Europe and widespread ad campaigns on billboards and in magazines, even a TV commercial I can't track down, Toss Away never succeeds and they dissolve owing millions to their ad agency and other creditors. Reportedly, 20,000 former Tossaway customers write letters to the company desperate for any remaining stock to last them because the company is shut down. The Minstrel Cup as a concept has gone for decades not to reappear until the 1980s when a former Tasset customer, Lou Crawford, designs a new rubber cup modeled almost exactly after the original Tasset design. Lou brings the cup back from the dead. Keeper Cup launches and timing is perfect. The TSS scare of the 80s helped propel it to success. The cup becomes a cult favorite product to those in the know. Eventually, former sales distributors of Keeper are inspired to create their own cup companies. Moon Cup in the UK makes the first silicone menstrual cup in 2002, right after which Diva Cup, started by a mother and daughter team out of Canada, launches their website and business in 2003 and sort of creates the menstrual cup industry as we know it today. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like and a comment. Also, let me know how you feel about this more casual YouTube style. And if you have suggestions for anything else I should tackle like this, leave a comment and let me know.